Turkey Point Nuclear Power Plant, operated by Florida Power and Light FPL, is not the most famous of its kind, but it holds a few notable distinctions. Located near Miami, this power plant houses two Westinghouse pressurized water reactors, each capable of generating 82 megawatts of electricity. Additionally, Turkey Point operates a gas-powered unit producing 1,150 megawatts, with a total capacity of 2,754 megawatts. It ranks as the third largest power plant in Florida and the 11th largest in the United States. But while these technical details may seem standard, the station's role in the area and its curious connection to wildlife goes beyond the typical narrative. When you think of a nuclear power plant like Turkey Point, a few things come to mind. The plant generates an enormous amount of electricity in a relatively small space, which is impressive on its own. However, the safety risks, particularly the long-term disposal of waste and the potential for catastrophic accidents like Chernobyl or Fukushima, often dominate the conversation. And then, they're the alligators, or rather, American crocodiles. Although it may seem strange, these reptiles have a surprising relationship with the power plant. So, what's the story behind this unlikely connection? Turkey Point, located near the bustling city of Miami, produces around 14 million megawatt hours of electricity each year from its nuclear reactors and an additional 6 million megawatt hours from natural gas. This output serves not only the city, but the entirety of Miami-Dade County. While the plant's benefits are apparent, it's not without controversy. Its operation raises concerns about emissions that affect the surrounding environment. One of the main environmental issues involves cooling the nuclear reactors. Like most nuclear plants, Turkey Point requires massive amounts of water to maintain safe operating temperatures for its reactors. Typically, power plants use either an open cycle system, which withdraws and releases water at a higher temperature, or a closed loop system with cooling towers to manage the heat. However, Turkey Point took a different route altogether by directly discharging heated water into nearby Biscayne Bay, a practice that raised alarm bells among environmentalists. The cooling water used in nuclear reactors could contain radioactive elements like tritium, a form of hydrogen that emits beta radiation. When released into the environment, tritium can contaminate local ecosystems. If it enters an organism's body, it can disrupt DNA, leading to mutations and an increased risk of cancer. Moreover, tritium has a half-life of 12 years, meaning it remains active in biological tissues for a long time, continuously emitting radiation. This made the practice of dumping water into Biscayne Bay extremely concerning. In response to public outcry and environmental concerns, Turkey Point switched to a new cooling system. Nearby, a network of 39 artificial canals, each about 5 miles long, was created to handle the heat generated by the reactors. These canals, spanning a total area of 10 square miles, allow water to cool as it circulates. This new system has largely addressed the problem of discharging hot, possibly contaminated water into Biscayne Bay. A satellite image of the cooling system illustrates just how effective it is. The warmer the water, the brighter the red color on the map. As the water moves through the canal system, it gradually cools down, with the temperature decreasing the further it moves from the station. Ecologists are relieved that Turkey Point no longer discharges heated water into the bay. However, a new environmental problem has arisen. The cooling system's operation has caused the salinity of the canals to skyrocket. When the plant opened in 1973, the salinity was around 26.5%. By 2014, this figure had jumped to a staggering 95%. The issue is compounded by the fact that the canals aren't lined allowing the salty water to seep into the ground, potentially contaminating the nearby Biscayne Aquifer, which supplies fresh drinking water to the region. So, while the cooling system has addressed one concern, it has created another, one that could impact the water supply for millions of people. Despite the environmental concerns, there's a fascinating silver lining to Turkey Point's operations. The American crocodile, unlike alligators, which are more common and not protected, the American crocodile is an endangered species. In 1975, it was placed on the endangered species list, with fewer than 300 individuals remaining in Florida. This species thrives in saltwater and brackish environments like bays, mangrove swamps, and river mouths, habitats that happen to be in close proximity to the power plant. The canals, 
which have increased salinity and consistently warm water, offer an ideal environment for these crocodiles, who seek out warm habitats for sunbathing and nesting. In 1976, the first American crocodile eggs were discovered in the ponds of Turkey Point. While no one knows exactly how they ended up there, the crocodiles likely found a sanctuary in the plant's cooling canals. The surrounding area, including the Biscayne and Everglades National Parks, provides a habitat where American crocodiles can thrive, though they were scarce at the time. The network of artificial canals is a perfect habitat for crocodiles because of the warm water and the salinity levels that suit their needs. Interestingly, American crocodiles require fresh water for the early stages of their lives. Young crocodiles spend their first three months in freshwater environments before they develop the salt glands necessary for survival in salt water. The canals near Turkey Point provide a mixture of salt and fresh water, which is ideal for young crocodiles. Each canal is separated by berms, elongated islands, where female crocodiles can lay their eggs, protected from human disturbance. At Turkey Point, the crocodiles have found an unintended sanctuary. The cooling canals are relatively undisturbed by human activity, with access restricted to protect both the animals and plant workers. In fact, researchers have worked diligently to monitor and protect the crocodile population, conducting nighttime surveys to check on the young hatchlings. Over the years, they've tagged more than 10,000 crocodiles, contributing to one of the most comprehensive data sets on any reptile species in the world. Thanks to these efforts, the American crocodile population around Turkey Point has flourished. In 2024, 529 hatchlings were documented in the cooling canals, meaning the population is growing rapidly. Researchers estimate that the population around Turkey Point has now surpassed 2,000 individuals, a stark contrast to the fewer than 300 crocodiles that remained in Florida in the 1970s. This growth can be directly attributed to the cooling canals, which have inadvertently created a perfect environment for the crocodiles to thrive. But the story doesn't end there. While the crocodile population has increased, there are still concerns about the potential impact of tritium contamination. Some experts question whether the radioactive water might be affecting the health of the reptiles, although there's no conclusive evidence to support this. In 2016, tests found elevated levels of tritium in the bay waters, but Florida Power and Light maintains that the water in the canals is not in contact with radioactive elements. The lack of canal lining remains a potential concern, as it could allow contaminated water to seep into the aquifer in bay, though the company insists this isn't an issue. Despite the uncertainty surrounding tritium, the overall health of the crocodile population appears unaffected. Researchers continue to monitor the population, and the number of hatchlings born each year is steadily increasing, indicating that the species is doing well. Turkey Point provides an interesting example of how human activity, even when it seems detrimental to the environment, can sometimes inadvertently benefit wildlife.